The snowpack around the Pacific Northwest has been shrinking, and it's only getting worse. From farming to salmon, loss of snowpack has wide-ranging impacts. Our Environment Northwest team is covering how snowpack impacts our different regions, from western to eastern Washington to Idaho and Oregon. hear the headlines, warmest year on record, hottest summer, and yes, those are noteworthy events, but some Northwest researchers are discovering that it's other overlooked periods that may be more significant and have a domino effect on things like snowpack moving forward. Let's go do it. These ski instructors <laughs> are in their element. Thank you. In the element. And it was snowing outside the building earlier. Which, so far this year, haven't been ideal. We could really use some cooperation from Mother Nature. Jim Smith's father founded ski school Snow Sports Northwest at Snoqualmie Pass in the 60s. So it's doing the trick. Scott Goddard yep. was hired by his dad in the 80s. You know, remember, we're, uh, we're trying to put 150 kids onto a much smaller area right now. Yep. It, it's condensing the area because of the lack of available runs. In their decades here, they've seen good and bad years. They knew El Nino meant this year wouldn't be great, and it's not. The USDA shows Washington's snow in the Cascades sits around half of normal, and the Olympics sits less than a third of normal. We're less than half of what we had last year for sure. Now they're navigating the terrain. It almost makes me think that we might have to move the season out. But even the good recent years don't compare to their childhood, growing up skiing this same mountain. We're consistently every year up here in the middle of November. We've lost the month on either end of the season. The timeline of that gradual melting is a subject Washington State University's PhD candidate Luke Reyes is devoting his studies to. Every year there seems to be these new sort of extreme events and record, record seasons or months. His team's newly published research initially set out to analyze the impacts of the Northwest 2021 heat dome on the snowpack when temperatures skyrocketed into triple digits for days straight and killed hundreds in the Northwest. People would post like before and after pictures of who would be hiking on Mount St. Helens or Mount Rainier and there'd be snow one day and then there was nothing there a week later. But when they looked at the numbers, they realized something huge. The heat dome is not the reason the snow melted that year. That was still mostly gone by the time the heat dome arrived, which suggested to us that something else might have been happening. Weaker, less headline worthy periods of warm temperatures chipped away at the snowpack before the heat dome arrived. Events that have doubled in frequency since the 90s. Sometimes these short term, you know, really acute events can be overlooked. That warming is having an impact here in the Northwest. Data from the EPA shows that Washington's snowpack has been decreasing significantly since the 1950s. On average, anywhere from 20 to 30 percent, but in some cases, as much as 50 to 60 percent. And projections show that due to warming temperatures, a lot of that winter precipitation will fall as rain instead of snow, further reducing the snowpack. And the snow season is shortening too. peak snowpack usually hits on April 1st, but in recent years that's changed anywhere from one to three weeks earlier now. And it's not just the snowpack, it's glaciers. Also, one recent study projects that all glaciers on the Olympic Peninsula will be gone by 2070 with a similar situation in the Cascades. The University of Washington report projects the snow season in the Cascades to decrease by half by the end of the 21st century, dropping from the historical 142 days of snow in the late 1900s to 87 days by the 2080s. And while these pros are navigating the decline and adjusting their teaching timeline, they're not stopping. I haven't worked a day since I started in the ski business. Yeah, who, who else can talk about this is my office right here, right? Hoping that with every lesson taught and mountain skied, yeah. they're teaching kids to be in their element, <laughs> in the elements. We'll just keep plugging along and waking up every day and looking for that, that next dump. You know? For Environment Northwest, okay. All right. I'm meteorologist Leah Pizzetti. All right. Bob Reese has been working as a salmon guide in Oregon for almost 30 years. 
Yeah. You know, we operate a $1.5 billion a year sport fishing industry here in Oregon, and people come to the state because of its natural resources, and, you know, salmon and steelhead is a big part of that. When he started back in 1996, things were good. He was doing a job he loved. There you go, yay! And the fish, they were plentiful. But that's changed over the last couple decades. We're left what uh, we historically had, you know, around 200 days of meaningful opportunity we're really down to uh, maybe about 50. And there's one key indicator Reese keeps close tabs on to know how the season's gonna be. We watch with a lot of anxiety how much snow is piling up in the Cascade Range. This is Deer Creek, uh, it's a trailhead. Chris Jordan, a fish biologist with NOAA, has been studying the relationship between snow and salmon for decades. So we are at about 4,000 feet of elevation. He said when it comes to snowpack, looks can be deceiving. Above 6,000 feet, it's a normal snow year. Snowpack in the past level of the Cascades, about four to 6,000 feet, has been declining over the last decade. Now, we're in an El Nino year, so lower snowpack isn't exactly surprising. But climate change has been pushing temps up for years now. And you don't have to look farther than our glaciers to see the impacts. Well, glaciers actually um, are the tangible indicator of what's happening to our snowpack. If we had lots of snowpack in the winter, we'd have bigger glaciers. That's Andrew Fountain, professor of geography at Portland State University. Yep. Glaciers form when more snow falls on an area than melts in the summer. Each new layer of snow compresses the layer beneath it, eventually turning into ice. But the last century has not been kind to our glaciers. Between 1907 and 2014, the glaciers on Mount Hood have shrunk by roughly 43%. And that's happening all over the Northwest. And the glaciers on the Olympic Peninsula should disappear by 2070. That's reflective of disappearing snowpack as well as increased melt in the summer. That spells trouble for the region's fish. Snowpack and glaciers in the Northwest act as frozen reservoirs that release water as they melt over the warm summer months, feeding the rivers and streams fish rely on. The timing and amount of flow in the river systems that are fed by snowmelt is critical for spring chinook and for steelhead. And even if we stopped burning fossil fuels today, temperatures won't start to decline for decades. So does that mean our beloved fish species are doomed? Jordan explained that water is stored in two ways. And it's stored either as snow or it's stored in the spongy you know, floodplains in the, in the soil as, as shallow groundwater. Now we can't change how much snow falls but we can restore some of that sponge. Oh, this is Waichu's Creek. And this to show us how that works, Jordan took us to a spot overlooking Waichu's Creek, just outside of Sisters. Before it was restored, the creek had one main channel with high banks and fast flowing water. To restore it to its natural state, crews essentially flattened the land. Where the land was high, lower that, where the land was low, fill it back in. Now, the creek meanders over a wide area. What that does is that allows the water that would be in the channel and leave the system really quickly, time to spread out and to soak in. It's to re-wet that sponge. And this is, this is where water is stored throughout the year. Without a reliable snowpack, restoring rivers and creeks is probably our best hope for retaining the flows we need to keep salmon around. Safe to say we need to do a lot more of it. Right. And for river guides like Bob Reese, the stakes oh, couldn't yeah. be higher. You know, we're having to find other work. There's not a full-time fishing guide left here. But, you know, this is a heritage for a lot of people. There's third-generation fishing guides that are working areas of Oregon because this is something that we grew into and, and we've historically had a, a love of. For Environment Northwest, I'm Kale Williams. Southwest Idaho gets about 12 inches of moisture each year, including both rain and snow but we would be a complete desert without the snowpack. It's everything. Snowpack in Idaho, Oregon, and Washington is essential to a successful irrigation and farming season. The snow melt feeds into our reservoirs, and reservoirs are kind of like a savings account. Ideally, the water will be there when we need it. The runoff in reservoirs flows through rivers and canals to homes and farmland. I've been uh, farming and been an orchardist since I was five years old, where we had gladiolas and chickens when I was a kid. So I have been orcharding now for just over 37 years. Lance Phillips owns and operates Gem Orchards in Emmett. If I could make a living and give my fruit away, there is nothing better than having someone come out to the orchard, pick 
the fruit that I have worked so hard for for nine months and see the joy on their face. They're so happy, the fruit of my labor, so to speak, and, and it is literally fruit. Phillips moved to southwest Idaho about 25 years ago. During that time, he's seen a lot of variation in the water supply. I've seen in the last just couple years that we're getting more moisture in February and March than where we used to get a lot in January and February. An EPA study says over the past 50 years, more winter precipitation has been falling as rain instead of snow. They expect that trend to continue. Specifically for Idaho, the EPA says the snowpack season is about 40 days shorter. We've gone into the falls in October where we've had very dry Octobers and Novembers where there was no water in the ground. In dry years, water managers have had to cut the irrigation season short. This most recently happened in fall of 2021, ending the season about a month early. We talked to the former Boise River Watermaster Rex Berry that year. We've got a lot of money invested in these crops and when they can't get the, the full amount of water that they really need, it puts stress on some of those crops and uh, consequently the reduced yield. According to the University of Idaho, the Gem State is second in the nation for the amount of irrigation water used, only behind California. We will actually have sprinklers now that we can see above ground. Phillips has lived in several areas of Idaho with different watersheds. I really like where we're at now, so um, a good reliable watershed that, that we have at least 50 to 80 percent of our water on a regular basis really helps me able to raise and do what I do. Even with a more reliable water source, Phillips switched to a method he has more control over and doesn't waste as much water. He, like others nearby, uses sprinklers and a drip system to limit the amount of water he loses to the soil or to the air. We've changed a lot in going from uh, a lot of flood irrigation to a majority of our farms and ranches in our area at least are converting to sprinkler and higher efficiency systems, pipelines, we're seeing canals lined, and how we manage it has had to change. Change that may become even more necessary as the snowpack is expected to continue shrinking across the Northwest. But I think all of those evolutions have been great because it allows us to, to conserve and extend and use it with more precision. We may be able to put more of that back towards wildlife benefits and other benefits that help everybody. For Environment Northwest, I'm meteorologist Sophia Bliss. The one-eyed lifty and I go by a dude. I'm always nice, yeah, I'm never rude. You don't need two eyes to see that dude knows his rhymes. He's the lifty rapper and I'll wear my black eye patch. Knows his chairs. There you are. Good job. And his snow. Slushy and wet. Springtime, we get a lot of corn snow. And then we have snurt, which is snow dirt mix. We've seen a lot of that this year, even at the top of Mount Spokane. Ah, we're right now, I think, at about 55% normal snowpack. It's at 46 inches currently, so we're well below. The mountains of eastern Washington and north Idaho are currently under moderate and severe drought due to the lack of snow on the ground. You know, as a lifty, we deal with snowpack pretty much every day. This lack of snow on the ground isn't necessarily a new thing. 2003-2004 season, I believe they closed on Valentine's Day. USDA data depicts a decrease over time in the snow water equivalent at snow tells around the region. 2013-14 season, we suspended mountain operations the Sunday before President's Day. Between 1955 and 2022, all stations in eastern Washington and north Idaho recorded a reduction in peak snowpack. Higher elevations, that number is just over 20%. One lower elevation station in North Idaho measured a drop of more than 70% from 1955 to 2022. But we're getting snow, we got a little bit today and every little bit helps for sure. It's all up to mother nature. You're the weatherman, right? <laughs> The mountains of eastern Washington, eastern Oregon, and North Idaho sit in the rain shadow of the Cascades. While the Pacific Ocean serves as an excellent moisture source for much of the western side of those states, as that moisture moves from west to east or zonally, it first hits the mountains, pushing upward. That rising motion in the atmosphere causes the warmer, moist air to first cool, then condense, forming clouds and eventually precipitation. 
that enhances the amount of rain or snow that you see in the Cascades, giving you more than you otherwise would and squeezing out more moisture than otherwise would get squeezed out. But as you move up and over the mountains, all that air has to come back down. This sinking motion quells cloud cover and precipitation, leaving much of central Washington and Oregon in a rain shadow or a desert. But as you move east from there, things get interesting once again. As elevation starts to increase in eastern Washington, rain and snow become more prevalent. Once again, the increase in elevation enhances precipitation. How's your day going, guys? Whether it falls as snow there you go. or rain. You learn to deal with the elements. Uh, previously frozen liquefied precipitation days because we don't use the R word up here. But it's not just the overall amount of snow. It's also how long that snow sticks around. Between 1982 and 2022, the Northern Rockies, right where we are, has seen an average decrease in about 15 to 20 days per season of that snow being on the ground. So not only are we not getting as much, it's just not sticking around as long and early spring warmth is melting it much faster. I think the biggest impact is going to be environmentally. It all depends on mountain snowpack is so important, especially for this region. Dude sees it here on the mountain. Come on out. But we will all see it when it comes to mountain runoff, increase in fire danger, and a longer fire season this summer. How's your day going? For Environment Good. Northwest. Good. What's your name? Noah. Noah. Have a good run, Noah. I'm meteorologist Jeremy Legu. This El Nino pattern is expected to stay strong through spring of 2024, but long term models are now hinting that a La Nina could dominate as we head into the second half of the year. Thank you so much for watching this shrinking snowpack series and be sure to stay with King 5 for the very latest.